Welcome friends. Topic of today's lecture is anatomical basis of extravision of urine during urethral injury. To know the anatomical basis of sites of extravision of urine, first we have to understand the attachment of the superficial fascia of the anterior abdominal wall and the perineum. So now we will draw a zeta section of the male pelvis. This is the anterior abdominal wall, this is the penis, the glans penis, the scrotum, this is the perineal region, this is the anal canal and this is the buttocks. Okay. This is the cut section of the pubic bone. These are the muscles of the anterior abdominal wall. Now, let us put the superficial fascia of anterior abdominal wall into this diagram. The superficial fascia of the anterior abdominal wall consists of two layers, a superficial fatty layer and a deep membranous layer. So, this is the superficial fatty layer of the anterior abdominal wall. And this is the deep membranous layer of the anterior abdominal wall. Okay. Over the anterior surface of the pubic bone, the membranous layer continues over the penis as a tubular sheath known as the penile sheath and covers the penis all around. Okay. Then it will enter into the wall of the scrotum. Okay. Here the fatty layer will get modified to form a layer of smooth muscle known as the dartos muscle. Dartos muscle. After covering the wall of the scrotum, it continues as a fascia which is known as Collis fascia. Okay, and this Collis fascia then gets attached to the posterior border of perineal membrane. So now we have to understand the concept of the perineal membrane. So let us assume this was is the this was the pubic arch, and from this pubic arch two fascia is getting attached, a superficial fascia and an inferior fascia. Okay, This inferior fascia is also known as perineal membrane, it is known as perineal membrane. And the space between these two fascia is known as deep perineal pouch okay and the space below this perineal membrane is known as superficial perineal pouch okay in the deep perineal pouch there are two muscles, anterior is the, is the spintric urethra and posterior is the deep transverse perineal muscle. Okay. At the posterior border, at the posterior aspect, the superficial fascia becomes continuous with the inferior fascia and, and this point where the two fascia meet is known as the perineal body perineal body okay in this perineal body or we can say the posterior border of the perineal membrane the collis fascia gets attached okay entirely there is a you can see a gap between the pubic bone and the 
junction of the superior fascia and the inferior fascia. This gap is filled by connective tissue and from this area passes through some nerves and vein which goes on to the dorsal aspect of the pelvis known as the dorsal nerve of pelvis and deep dorsal vein of pelvis. Now, this whole structure that is the superior fascia, the perineal membrane and the muscles in the deep perineal pouch are in total called as urogenital diaphragm. So now you have seen the posterior limit of this membranous layer. So what happens on the later aspect, lately? When the membranous layer was covering the scrotal wall, laterally it was getting attached to the margins of the pubic arch. So to explain that, I would be drawing a small diagram of the pubic arch. So if this was the pubic arch, okay, this was the obturator foramen. The membranous layer was covering the anterior surface of the pubic bone, okay, and covering, continuing as the tubular sheath of the penis. So this is the opening or cut section of the penile sheath, okay. Then after covering the penis, it was continuing to the wall of the scrotum. So here was the opening of the scrotal wall, okay. Then it was continuing as the colis fascia under this. Now, lately, we can see that this membrane is getting attached to the margins of the pubic arch. Okay. Now, let us put the unit bladder and urethra in this diaphragm. This is the unit bladder. Okay. This is the part of the prostatic urethra which is covered by the prostate. Now it appears the urogenital diaphragm and becomes the membranous part of urethra or the membranous urethra and come into the superficial penile pouch and becomes as a penile urethra or the spongy urethra and enters into the penis and open outwards. Now let us see what are the sites of urethral injury. The urethral injury can be of two types, a superficial injury and a deep injury. The superficial injury occurs in the penile urethra and the deep injury occurs in the level of the prostatic urethra. Okay? These injuries of the urethra can occur due to any road traffic accident. When we sit on the bike and we fell, the tank of the bike can hit the pineal region and the urethra in this area can can get injured. So let us see what happens in the superficial injury of urethra. As I have already said, the superficial injury of urethra occurs in the penile part of the urethra. So there is a cut here and from this cut the urine extravenates. Okay. And enters into the this area which is known as the superficial perineal pouch. Okay, and from the superficial pain pouch, it can enter into the scrotal cavity. Okay, it can go backwards also, but this backward flow is limited by the attachment of the colis fascia to the posterior border of the perineal membrane. And we all know this area that is on the sides of the anal canal is lying the ischio anal fossa or the ischio anal canal. So this fluid will never go into the ischio rectal fossa or the ischio anal fossa due to the attachment of the colis fascia to the posterior border of the perineal membrane. Now we have seen that the urine can go downwards, it can go backwards, it can also go anteriorly. So it can go anteriorly and enter into the penis. The urine can also enter into the anterior abdominal wall between the muscles of the anterior abdominal wall 
and this membranous layer. So this was the sites of extra vision of urine during the superficial injury in the penile part of the urethra. Now look into the other condition. Other condition in which there is injury into the prostatic part of urethra or we can say a deeper injury of urethra. So at this level the injury will occur and urine will flow out into the this space and this space is the extra peritoneal space around the prostate and the urinary bladder. Now let us put the peritoneum also in this diagram. We know that the peritoneum covers the superior surface of the urinary bladder. Okay, then comes on to the anterior abdominal wall. Okay. So urine from here can go into the anterior abdominal wall through the retropubic space. But here the urine will lie between the abdominal muscles, anti abdominal muscles and the lining peritoneum, parietal peritoneum. This was the difference between the sites of extravasion of urine in the superficial injury and a deeper injury of urethra. Okay, so if I summarize, if there is superficial injury in plant urethra, urine cannot go backward in the, to the ischiorectal fossa due to attachment of the colis fascia to the posterior border pineal membrane, it can go into the scrotal cavity, it can go into the penis, it can go into the anti-abdominal wall between the abdominal wall muscles and the membranous layer. But in the deeper injury of urethra that is in the prostatic urethra, it can go into the extra peritoneal space around the prostate and the bladder and it can go into the retropubic space and can go into the anterior abdominal wall but here it lies between the lining parietal peritoneum and the abdominal wall. Okay, now, let us see the other side of the uh, extra region of urine that is laterally. For that I have to draw a anterior view of the anterior abdominal wall and the upper thigh. Let us draw an anterior view of the anterior abdominal wall. This is the thigh region. This is the two pubic arch. This was the pubic symphysis. Now let us put the membranous layer in this diagram. The membranous layer was going downwards towards the pubic bone and from here it was continuing over the penis as a tubular sheath. Okay, then it was continuing over the scrotal wall and then it was becoming continuous with the okay. Laterally, we saw that this membranous layer is getting attached to the pubic arch. Okay, this was the continuation of the membranous layer into the pineal region. What about the thigh region? The deep fascia of the thigh is known as, or the lower limb is known as fascia lata. Okay, this is the inguinal ligament which is getting attached to the anterior superior leg spine to the pubic tubercle okay now let us put the membranous layer here the membranous layer here is going towards the thigh and one finger breadth below this inguinal ligament there is a line known as the Holden's line and at this level the membranous layer is getting attached tightly adherent to the deep fascia of the thigh. So if you put like this, the membranous layer was getting attached to the deep fascia of the leg with the fascia lata. So the space between the superficial fascia and the deep fascia was getting orbitated at this level that is known as the Holden's line. So any fluid which is present below the membranous layer will never enter into the thigh. So in which condition? A fluid can accumulate in the space below the membranous layer. That was the extra vision of urine in the superficial injury of urethra or the penile part of urethra. So in that condition, there was urine coming into the anterior abdominal wall. Okay, below the membranous layer, and it can go here. 
but it would be limited by this Holden's line because here the membranous layer was getting attached to the underlying deep fascia of the thigh. You can also see in this diagram the urine was also present in the superficial perineal pouch and from here it can enter into the thigh but this flow is limited by the attachment of this membranous layer to the pubic arch. So now I think you have understood the anatomical basis of extravision of urine in urethral injury. Thank you.